Hi everyone. Today we are going to see another Singapore math problem. We will use both models and algebra to solve this problem. There were 200 more apples than pears at a fruit stall. After one fourth of the apples and two over seven of the pears were sold, there were 170 more apples than pears left. How many apples were there at the fruit stall at first? And how many pear were there left at the fruit stall in the end? It should be pears here. So let's take a look at this question. See, initially there were 200 more apples than pears at the fruit stall. Here, more than. After more than what comes is pears. So we are, pairs is our reference, we are basing it on pairs. So we are going to draw a model for pairs. Let's let this model that we have drawn here represent the total number of pairs at the fruit stall. Then there were 200 more apples. So now when it comes to the apples, actually it is, it has, we have the same number of apples as much as pairs. In addition to that, there are 200 more. So we have extra 200 there. So apples is 200 more than pairs. So that we have represented the first statement that you have sh seen here. After one fourth of the apples and two over seven of the pairs were sold, there were 170 more apples than pairs left. So first let's look at the first part of the statement. After one fourth of the apples, were sold. So what we do is we had actually two portions. This we know the actual quantity here, whereas this here was an unknown quantity, right? So in that situation, what we do is we actually divide these separately in the sense one fourth of the apples were sold. So we divide this into four equal sized units and take out one of it because that was sold. Similarly, when we come to 200, we take 200 separately and we take one fourth of that and consider that as sold. Right? So in this case, for the unknown portion, one part out of this four part was sold. Similarly, we know that one fourth of 200 is equal to 50. So 50, 50 is sold and we are left with 150. So just take a note that anytime you have an no unknown and a known quantity and we are going to apply some fractions on it, we have to do it separately. All right? And two sevenths of the pairs were sold. So we are going to divide them into seven equal sized units and we know that two of that will be sold. And one thing to note here is that this up to here, this apples, forget about this 200, which is uh, the numeric part, the unknown part uh, of the apples is exactly equal to the unknown part of the pairs. So the only thing is apples are divided into four equal units, pairs are divided into seven equal units. If we can somehow divide them into equal sized units, into equal number of units, then the unit sizes would be the same. Right now, the unit size is not the same. This is up to here and this is up to here, here. So if we want to make the unit sizes to be the same, that simple trick is to use LCM. Here we have four units here, including the one that was sold. Right now, our objective is to convert them into equal size units. So we still include this uh, unit which was sold. Here there are two units which were sold, but we will still include it for the time being. So seven and four, the LCM of seven and four is seven times four, which is 28. Now, this is four. So we will divide this into seven units each here. We are dividing it into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven units each. Here we have seven times four gives 28. So we are going to divide each of these units into four smaller sized units. 
Now, from here to here, from here to here, we will have 28 units. And here also, we will have 28 units. So the unit sizes would be the same. That's the one for that, and this is for the pairs. And now, when you compare this, you can see that see, from here to here is 28. But this, whatever you see in red, was actually uh, given away or sold. So that is 7. 28 minus 7, we will be left with 21 units. That is, initially we had three big sized units. We divided them, subdivided them, each of them into seven smaller sized units. So three times seven, we have 21 left right now. In then we have 150 in terms of known quantity left. Whereas in terms of pairs, we have five units was left, two units were sold. So five times four is 20, 20 smaller sized units are left at this point of time. Now, but what we are going to do here is that one extra, see 21 minus 20 is one, this one is extra, which is more than the pairs. Um, let's see here, there were, meaning after the apples, one fourth of the apples and two seventh of the pears were sold, there were 170 more apples than pears left. So in this case, we want to find out how much more, how much uh, apples are more than pears. That's what we are going to find out. So when you look at the unknown quantity, there is one unit which is more than what pears are left here. And in the known quantity, there is 150, which is also more than the number of pairs. So let's just um, block out the sold pieces. Now we are looking at what is left. So now when you look at this, you clearly can see that this one unit more apples is this one unit more and then this 150. But here it says there were 170 more apples than pears left, which means this one unit plus 150, that should be equal to 170 because there are 170 more apples than pears that was left after they sold out the shown number of apples and pears. So one unit, this one unit plus 150 is equal to 170. So one unit is 170 minus 150, which is equal to 20. So one unit is equal to 20. Uh, and that unit is re represented by this unit size that you see here. And now coming to the questions, how many apples were there at the fruit stall at first? Just uh, be very careful. He's asking at first, how many apples were there? So for that, we have to bring up these that were sold also. So here we have uh, 21 plus 7, 28 units, right? Here we have 28 units plus 200. So that is the total number of apples. So four times seven, there were four units, each was divided into seven parts. So four times seven is equal to 28 units. And so apples at first will be equal to 28 times 20 because each unit represents 20 apples. So 28 times 20 plus this 150 plus 50, which is 200. So that is the total number of apples that were at the stall at first. So that is equal to 28 times 20 is 560 plus 200. That gives us 760. So that is the total number of apples that were in the stall at first. Now coming to the second question, how many pears were left at the fruit stall in the end? So here it's not about in the beginning, In it's about at the end. At the end, this was sold out, so we are just left with 20 units of pairs. So pairs at the end would be 20 units or 20 times 20 because each unit represents 20 pairs. So that is equal to 400. And that's how we solve this problem. I hope 
you understood, uh, it was clear. If you have any doubts, please uh, share them in the comment section and I will try to get back to you. If you like the video, please like the video and share it with your friends. Now we are going to go and uh, see how the same problem can be solved using algebra. There were 200 more apples than pears at a fruit stall. After one fourth of the apples and two seventh of the pears were sold, there were 170 more apples than pears left. How many apples were there at the fruit stall at first? And how many pears were left at the fruit stall in the end? So we are going to use algebra to solve this problem. Now we take the first statement, there were 200 more apples than pears. So pears is our reference because it comes after the more than uh, state, uh, the words. So let's say, assume pears be represented by x. The total number of pears is equal to x. Let's assume that. If we assume that, then the apples will be 200 more than the pears. So apples would be x plus 200. All right. After one fourth of the apples and two seventh of the pears were sold, see, once one fourth of the apples and two seventh of the pears were sold, there were 170 more apples than pears left. So there is a relationship here again that is shown between apples and pears. And that is after a certain amount of apples and pears were sold. So if one fourth of the apples are sold, we will be left with three-fourths of the apples. We know that the total apple is x plus 200. So what is left is three-fourths of x plus 200. That is the apples left. When it comes to the pairs, two-seventh of the pairs were sold, which means what is left is five-seventh of the pairs, right? Or five over seven of x. Now, when this happened, when these were sold, see, after they were sold, this is the apples left and this is the pears left. There were 170 more apples than pears left. So, from whatever is left, this side, the apples, it is 170 more than this. So, if we want to make this equal to this, then we have to add another 170 quantity. It could be pairs, right? In this case, it's pairs. Add 170 here so that we can equate them, make them equal. So let's say when we add 170, then these two become equal. That gives us an equation so that we can solve the equation and find the value of x and then the rest of the answers. So now 3 by 4 off is the same as times x plus 200. That would be 3 times x. x is in, on the numerator. It can be written as x over 1. So 3 times x over 4 times 1. So 3x over 4 plus 3 times 200 is 600 over 4 is equal to, here we get 5 over 7 times x. So 5x over 7 plus 170. Now what we are going to do is uh, bring all these x terms to one side and the numbers to the other side. So 3x over 4, we are bringing this over here so it will be minus of 5x over 7 which is equal to 170, that is from the right hand side and this is what we are bringing over. So minus and 600 over 4 is equal to 150, that's we have straight forwardly put here it as 150. So 4 times uh, say 15 is 60. So 4 times 150 will be equal to 600. Now in this case again if we are going to because the denominators are not the same we have to make them same only then we will be able to do algebraic calculations on the numerator addition or subtraction can be done for the numerators so how do how do we make these uh, two denominators the same the trick again is using lcm or the lowest common multiple and the lowest common multiple for, for 4 and 7 is 28 
So four times seven here also times seven. Whenever we multiply a quantity with the denominator, we should multiply the same quantity to the numerator so that the actual value of this does not change. Again here, to make it 28, it is times 4 and times 4. So that becomes 7 times 3, 21. 21x minus, this is 5 times 4, 20x divided by 28 is equal to, this is 20. Now, 21x minus 20x is 1x. And this 28, when we bring it to the other side, it will become multiplication. So x is equal to 20 times 28, which is 560. So that is the value of x, which is the total number of pairs at first. Right? Now, let's go to the question. How many apples were there at the fruit stall at first? At first, there were x plus 200 apples, right? Apples at first is equal to x plus 200. And we know the value of x, which is 560. So that's equal to 560 plus 200, which is 760. Now we go to the second question. How many pairs were left at the fruit stall in the end? So remember, this pairs is equal to x. That was the pair number of pairs at the beginning. But then, 2 seventh of the pairs were sold, so we were left with 5 seventh of the x, or the number of pairs. So here the question is about how many pairs were left at the end. So pairs at the end would be equal to 5 seventh of x, or 5x over 7. And x, we replace x with 560. So that is equal to 5 over 7 times 560. We know that 7 times 8 is 56. So 7 times 80 will become 560. And once you get 80 here, 5 times 80 gives us 400. So that is the total number of pairs that we have. I hope this was uh, helpful, useful. If you find this video useful, do click on the like button share it with your friends and do subscribe to my channel and if you want to see more videos like this whenever i post then you can click on the bell icon so that you will be receiving notifications whenever i upload videos thank you happy learning have a great day bye